I'm Tom Johnson, Thomas Johnson, Antique Furniture Restoration in Gorm, Maine. This is a nice little antique fancy chair from about 1830, 1840. This is a $2 find at a yard sale. And uh, it's very interesting. It has all this false greening and it has this uh, gold stenciling of sorts. And I'm not going to try to recreate all that, but I'm going to restore, re-glue and repair and restore this chair. It does need a new stretcher over here, which needs to be false grain, so I'll show you how to do that. Okay, I've re-glued the legs and stretchers. I made a new stretcher just from a conventional dowel from the hardware store. So let's get started. First thing I'm going to do is sand the dowel really well with 150. Okay, the next step is to stain this wood the, the background color that I see here. I'm going to use a little paint thinner so I can really get a good look at this. That background color looks great. I know from experience I don't want to put uh, dye stain directly on this wood. I'm not sure what kind of wood it is. It'll get looking pretty funky pretty quickly. So I'm going to what they call size this wood. In other words, I'm going to seal it with a very, very thin coat of shellac. Uh, one part shellac out of the can and like five parts alcohol. Okay, it uh, seems dry now, no need to sand. I'm going to uh, brush on some medium brown walnut dye stain. Okay, the stain is dry, uh, and now I need to give it a coat of shellac. And in fact, I'm gonna give the entire chair a coat of shellac at this time. I love how beautiful the graining is. And you know, I think that these kind of grain furniture, the fancy chairs, the Boston rockers, pieces like that, are really, really underrated uh, part of Americana. All right, I'm going to uh, let this dry overnight. Okay, now it's dried overnight. I'm going to abrade this just to smooth it out a little bit with this pad. Then I'm going to apply glaze to try to, you know, get this stripe effect like we see in the leg here. A glaze is any type of a medium you can buy. This is a glaze medium to which you can add oil colors to make any color that you want. Uh, uh, this is Van Dyke Brown. I like to use the glazes that are, already have colors mixed in them like this. I can always change or add to the color if I need to. So I'm going to try to make a kind of an even coat of glaze here, which gives a little bit of the stripey effect I'm looking for. But now I'm going to use this comb, this is a graining comb, and try to give a little bit of a wave to it. Okay, I've got some pretty good stripes there. I'm just going to leave it alone, let this glaze dry for a couple of hours, and then I'll fix it with a coat of shellac. Now I'm going to spray a coat of shellac on this stretcher. I might be able to brush a coat on, but I'm afraid of messing up my glazing job. So this is looking pretty good, at, uh, but my background's a little bit light, so I think I'll tone it with a little bit of a Van Dyke Brown toner. All right, I'm going to uh, scuff this now with a 3M pad. All right, now I'm going to give a final coat. I'm not going to use shellac because it's so shiny. Uh, instead, I'm going to use the uh, tongue oil varnish because it's satin. Okay, the tongue oil's dried actually for two days. I'm just going to go over it now with uh, four zero steel wool and my uh, beeswax polish. All right, there we go. This is a great little antique chair, uh, circa 1830-1840. It's a great yard sale find for two bucks. My daughter came to see. I, of course, re-glued it. Uh, made a new spindle, which is just a dowel from the hardware store, but I stained it and grained it to match. There you go. I think it looks 